Cruising on the Virgin Voyages Valiant Lady this summer, our first stop was in Key West, Florida, and we're going to take you to explore this charming port. Now I'll admit Key West was not on my travel bucket list, but when the ship pulled up to port, and I mean right up to the town, we took a leisurely day strolling, exploring, and getting a real feel for the Florida Keys with its little museums and shops, water sports, and easygoing Jimmy Buffett style. And we did it without spending any money. We want to show you what your options are so you can plan the best possible day here for your vacation. So does this qualify as the easiest ship walk off into port you've seen? Mm, probably. I think so, yeah. I think it is. We opted for a self-guided walking tour, and I'll link the website in the description below. This tour was more about sightseeing than water sports, but as you walk the dock, there are plenty of local businesses offering jet skis, boat tours, windsurfing, and more. We started out at the shops at Mallory Square, and it was filled with cute boutiques and art shops, plus some great coffee options. So if you want to take something special home from your trip, you won't have to look too far from the ship. There was also the more open air Mallory Square Market. While these were less boutique-y and a little more touristy, they were nice. There are plenty of tourist traps with cheap t-shirts further down Duval Street, but these seem to be souvenirs of a somewhat higher quality. Oh, and there were chickens everywhere. We soon realized that these were actually a celebrated symbol of Key West culture. Between these two buildings is the Key West Aquarium. As we exited the shops, we could hear the guides at the aquarium giving details about the sea life to the guests. If we had our kids with us, this would have been a great option. Now, this area is clearly a tourist hub but in a quaint and kitschy way that I kinda loved. Everything from the trolley tour to the conch train and the shipwreck museum, it was all really cute. And a good option if you wanted something close to the ship. I really didn't know what to expect from Key West and it is beautiful. Some of these houses remind me of some of our beachy time along the Carolina coast, like the Charleston area. It's really, really lovely. A lot of this walking tour is talking about the conservationists and the naturalists who did um, pictures of some of the early uh, birds and flora and fauna of the area. And it's cool to see the old buildings, but this one in particular, the Audubon House, is really beautiful. The tropical gardens around it. If I were to pay for a tour, that might be the one. We just passed southernmost brewery and restaurant and they have a sign that this was the birthplace of Pan Am and Nick is a big Pan Am and really all things aviation fan. It's actually a big part of the reason why I like Delta because Delta took on Pan Am's transatlantic routes when Pan Am folded. Yep and they said that their first office was right there in that building and which is Pretty darn cool. And it wasn't even on the walking tour. We just happened to walk by it. Really cool, interesting history down here. The walking tour gave us the history of all kinds of buildings, from churches to bars. The Bull and Whistle Bar went from being a like saloon and boarding house to a brothel to a speakeasy during Prohibition and then has had many many colorful things but you've got the bull and then slightly different vibes at whistle bar upstairs and then at the very very top is the garden of eden bar which is clothing optional we won't be going there as we started our stroll down duval street the main thoroughfare with lots of stores and restaurants there was really a mix of tourist traps smoke shops walk-up bars but there were also a number of chain stores and outlets like banana republic factory and a coach outlet and all the other girls try to chase me. And if you need some basics, there's a CVS on Duval Street. There's actually two CVSs. We stopped at the other one. But it's good if you need some basics. Sometimes also, it's hard to find them in Oh, right let's go shopping. Let's go shopping. 
But as gluten-free, dairy-free diners, we'd done a little research to find safe foods for our diet and knew to check out Moondog Cafe. This local eatery was filled with bright murals and we were thrilled with all the gluten-free and vegan markings on their menus. Since we just had brunch on the ship, which you can see in this video here, we weren't looking for a full meal, but the desserts were a perfect pick-me-up in the middle of our walk. You're making a mad face. No, this is really good. The icing on the carrot cake is wildly buttery. I want to know what vegan butter they use because it's so good. Really fluffy. The, um, the layer in the middle between the two layers of cake is like that thick. And on the key lime tart, you get that little flambe on the top, a toasted marshmallow almost. And I get that the crust is crumbly and tough because it's gluten-free, but also tarts are supposed to have these like crunchy crusts. So it's really good and it's quintessential to the area because key limes are from the Florida Keys. Whether you're gluten-free or not, Moondog Cafe is a top recommendation for a delicious and easy bite in Key West. Well, that was delicious and super sugary, um, but the iced tea was really refreshing and the air conditioning was great. So we're ready to continue our walk. Guys, there's a chicken. He's crossing the road. There are chickens everywhere here. So we picked up a little ornament of one because he was cute. On this tour, which I will post the link to down below, we skipped two of the stops that took you even further to the end of the island. The southern part. Right. Now, the thing to point out is that it's a major tourist spot to go to that point because it is the southernmost point in the continental US. Yes, we're not on mainland, but we're in Florida. So this is the southernmost point besides Hawaii in the US. <laughs> And so people do go down there. There's even a spot that is the spot where everyone takes photos. You wait in line yeah. for like 20 minutes. Supposedly, to take a there's a lot of folks go down there. So we decided to go ahead and skip that and the extra walking it would be involved. But just understand, we are very far south. We're only 90 miles to Cuba. This lighthouse was constructed in 1848, although its predecessor was on the same spot and is the oldest lighthouse location in all the Florida Keys. Remember, this used to be a major uh, port city with all kinds of trade coming in and out and has a big culture of salvaging shipwrecks because so many ships crashed over the years and they were, have just tons of treasures that they have found and salvaged. So that's kind of fun things you can do at some of the various museums and tours. Right across the street from the lighthouse is the Ernest Hemingway house behind this brick wall here, which is where he lived from 1931 to 1939. The house was originally used as a family residence and later as a boarding house. Not only do they have some of Hemingway's old uh, furniture, his writing desk, they also have many, many cats on the ground. The sign says, don't pick them up. Um, but they have many cats living on the grounds that are supposed to be the descendant of Hemingway's cat, Snowball. Snowball. Who was polydactyl. Six toes. The pastel paint jobs and beachy houses continued to charm us as we wandered back toward the waterfront. Hey friend, if this is helping you plan your vacation, please subscribe to the channel so we can help you out even more. We'd love to have you as part of our community. Now we're down in the state park that's on the waterfront and right that way is the Eco Discovery Center, which is supposed to be kid friendly, but we don't have kids with us. Um, and it's also free. So maybe if we came here with our kids, we'd consider that option. There's also a playground and a splash pad in this area. That's a nice splash pad. Nick's about to go running through the splash pad. <laughs> and just down the waterfront from the Eco Discovery Center is this Coast Guard Museum. This is a former Coast Guard vessel that has been turned into a museum. We found the part that looks like Old Key West Resort at Disney World. Botanists have long come to this tropical climate to learn about the incredible plant life, and I can see why. But for history buffs, the best stop may be the Harry Truman Little White House, with guided tours available. Truman took 13 trips here, and numerous other presidents have used the house as well. 
If I had a couple extra hours, this is probably the thing I would have paid admission to do. Y'all, it's real hot. Anyway, one thing that Nick said, I didn't say it, but I kind of agree with it. There are a lot of little museums and tours mm -hmm. and a lot of them are kind of uh, made by locals. Um, all of them are just like a little bit overpriced. I just thought, you know, we'll pop into that, the Truman, Harry's Truman little White House or the um, Hemingway House and everything is like $20-ish and so you're not gonna probably do multiples of those in one day. And I don't know if they're quite worth it or not. And with that, we are back. So what'd you think of Key West? It was a lot of fun. It was like perfect for a day out. And yeah. we got started a little bit late because we went and had brunch. For, well, you did yoga and then we went and had brunch. So we didn't get on land until 11.30 or so. If you watch this channel very much, you understand we do a lot of European cruises with a lot of sightseeing. We don't do a lot of Caribbean cruises. We don't do a lot of beachy ports. This was really cute. It was really, um, I think, easy to navigate because there's no language barrier. It was kind of a mix of New Orleans and Charleston, Charleston and, and Florida Beach, not Miami, not yeah. quite hip enough to be Miami. There are parts of it that are just beachy port, but if you want to go looking for history, you can. If you want to go looking for kind of high-end vacation rentals, you can. With a Caribbean feel. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's kind of a perfect way to spend a day. I don't know if I would do multiple. Yeah, I don't know that I would do a trip in its own right. But, but if we did, it would be probably more water sports kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. which we didn't do today. But for just seeing the culture of the area, that was a fun yeah. and um, free day because it was all self- Yeah, we did a self-guided tour, yeah. which was good. So aside from the cost of our cake, which you should go pay for because it was so good. <laughs> it was really good. Um, <laughs> really good and very economical port day. Then we boarded the ship. To see all the details of our Virgin Voyages stateroom, watch this video here. Thanks so much, travelers.